Alright All right, guys, right now we are in the outback of Western Australia looking for a creature you truly have to see to believe. The thorny devil is like a living sculpture and some rumors say it is so sharp it can actually draw blood when you try to catch it. So if we're lucky enough, we're going to put those rumors to the test. Let's get searching. They live exclusively on a diet of ants. Because of that need, if you find an ant mound or an ant line, there's a good chance there's a thorny devil somewhere in the vicinity so we can then create a perimeter and start really scanning the area. These are masters of camouflage in this environment, so you really need to narrow it down to a sweet spot. So sharp. Ah. This is definitely thorny devil habitat. Everything out here is spiky. Especially this plant right here. This is like little razor blade leaves. Gonna keep an eye out for that one as we search for this creature. Here we go. This is a good indication. You see that line in the sand right there? That's an ant track. You can actually see a few tiny, tiny ants making their way back to their nest. But this is great, guys. We've got the sandy environment. We found the food. Now it's time to find the devil itself. What I'm looking for now are either foot tracks or the outline. It has a very distinct contrast with the rest of the environment, the outline of the tail and the horns on the front. And that's what I'm gonna be scanning for along the ridges and along the bush lines. Luckily, the thorny devil is not very fast. You can see why you have to be such a specialized animal to call this your home. Humans would not do very well living out here. Oh. I see one. Got one. We got a devil. Ho oh, oh. ho. Yes. Yes. We got one. Oh man. This is the coolest lizard on the planet, guys. Oh my gosh. I am so excited right now. I cannot believe we found a thorny devil. Look at how cool this little dragon is. This is one of the top targets out here. And unlike their cousins in America and Mexico, the horn lizards, these guys are actually super spiky. And you see it puffing up its body and pushing those spines out. That is one of its defense mechanisms. And I could tell you that if you were to grab onto this thorny devil without knowing that it was sharp, you would get a handful of spikes. Look at how cryptic the color patterning is. This animal is superior at camouflage in this environment from the sand that's demonstrated in its arms to the foliage and the yellow leaf litter. This animal is perfectly designed for this habitat. And you can see that I'm not really doing much to keep the animal here with us. They're very docile and slow moving. In fact, they use their tail as a balance to step forward. They're almost like a chameleon and they'll do very cautious steps. So look at that, just in a matter of minutes from presenting this animal, it's already changed its color to a much more vibrant yellow on the back. And that's probably because the sun is really starting to come out today. And like most lizards, it is ectothermic. The more heat it absorbs in its body, the more energy it's going to have. And it certainly has earned its name, the thorny devil. It is extraordinarily sharp and spiny. And it is covered from the tip, tip of its tail, all the way to its fingers and sharp spikes. Andrew, stick your finger out there. Tell me what that's like. Wow, it's like, it's like prickers. It's literally as sharp as the thorns on a rose. Just because it has these defense mechanisms doesn't mean that this lizard doesn't have any predators. There are animals out here that would make a meal out of a thorny devil, including species of hawks, and of course, the predatory goannas, the giant monitors that live in this country. So that's where this animal will rely on its superior camouflage to blend into its environment, to not give its location away. It also has another unique defense mechanism. You see those two horns right at the neck? That is a false head. And in a defense situation, the thorny devil will tuck in its head, offer up that false head to any would-be predator so it has a chance to escape if attacked. So let's see if we can actually get it to do that. Offering that false head up. That is a great display 
All right, let's pick it back up. Gosh, those spikes are sharp. Ah, oh, do you see him right there? Try to horn me. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Let's calm down. Let's calm down. I thought we had an agreement. We we're gonna do this scene and I was gonna put you back, I'm trying to show everybody how cool you are. There we go. If you ever wanna see one in person, you have to come here to one of its native ranges. Right now we are in Western Australia, but the range extends all the way to the center of the continent. But it lives in this specialized desert terrain, feeding on ants of a particular variety. Now, when I say feeding on ants, I should say feasting on ants. This little lizard has the ability to eat up to 3,000 ants a day. It will eat up to 1,000 ants in a single meal. And because of that, it actually is said that they are super intelligent. They have the ability to track through their environment to locate different colonies of ants, and they make sure that they don't over predate any specific colony. They wanna be able to come back to the food line to get another meal when they need it. These animals all have a very unique color pattern. You see underneath there? The patterning on the belly is like an individualized fingerprint for these lizards. So scientists will actually take photographs of the underside of a thorny devil so they can study the populations in any given area. And this one is super cool. It's very reticulated, almost like tiger stripes. Ah, so sharp. Ah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ah, in addition to being super spiky, it has another very unique mechanism that has developed for life out here in the desert. And that's the ability to drink using its feet. Now I've heard that if you actually pour water out and place a thorny devil in a small puddle, you can witness this happening. So we are going to try to demonstrate that for you right now. I've got a little water here. All right, let's see. Look at that. See all that moisture? Definitely have water coming up the back. I can see it on the neck. It's probably hydrating its eyes. And if we stay here long enough, it would actually be able to siphon some of that water into its mouth. But that is so cool. So those scales are adapted to be able to suck up moisture from the ground to keep this lizard hydrated. It's hard to believe, even holding it here in my hand, seeing it move, seeing it look at me, I'm almost in disbelief that this is even a real living thing. And for those of you who've been watching to see if the thorny devil is indeed sharp enough to draw blood, well, here you go. I mean, it is, it is spiky. It's like holding the thorns of a rose. So I'm gonna do this delicately. Ready? Ah, you're spying in me. Ah, yep, ah, it's wriggling around and it's so spiky, but ah, I think the verdict is in. I do not think the thorny devil is sharp enough to draw blood, even though, ah, ow, oh, he's spiky. Definitely does not feel good when it tenses up those spines, ow. From its defense mechanisms and the spines and the false head to even the way that it drinks, how cool was it to come across the real dragon of the outback, the thorny devil. I'm Mark Benz, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, buddy, we're gonna put you back.